Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We encourage you to use hand sanitizers and to maintain a distance of two meters in the communion line. The wearing of masks is still encouraged. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch, and our opening hymn is found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 644, O God, our help in ages past, number 644. Please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Father. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries this morning, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to be merciful and compassionate to others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Give us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. 
But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For, the, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. The word of the Lord. The response to Psalm 34. The poor one called and the Lord heard. The poor one called and the Lord heard. The
Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The poor one called and the Lord heard. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes, two men possessed by demons came out of the tombs and met him. They were so fierce that no one could pass that way. Suddenly they shouted, What have you to do with us, God, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a large herd of swine was feeding at some distance from them. And the demons begged him, If you cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And Jesus said to them, Go. And they came out and entered the swine, and suddenly the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and perished in the waters. The swine herds ran off, and on going into the town, they told the whole story about what had happened to the demoniacs. And then the whole town came out to greet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighborhood. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, in the Gospel reading today, uh, yesterday we had Jesus calming the storm in the sea, uh, in the boat with the apostles. So in the Gospel reading today, Jesus stepped ashore on the other side of the lake of Galilee after calm calming that storm at the sea, and he's met by another storm, two very disturbed people. They were so disturbed that they lived among the tombs, among the dead, and no one could pass that way for fear of them. So Jesus, however, was not afraid of them, even though they initially addressed him in a very aggressive way. The gospel suggested no individual and no group was out of bounds as far as Jesus was concerned. He drew close to all people in a life-giving way, even to those whom no one would approach out of fear. Jesus' response to the aggressive approach of these two people was he stayed his ground, and he calmly, and he calmly, uh, took that disturbed aggression of these people and calmed them down, just as he had earlier calmed the sea and the storm on the lake. Jesus went on to engage them and heal them and to restore them to themselves and also, importantly, to restore them to the community. In the presence of so much evil in the world, the risen Lord's life-giving power at work in our lives is stronger than the evil forces in our world which dehumanize and damage. That is why we need always to be people of hope, the Lord is always at work among us and through us, so we need to courageously open ourselves to the life-giving and healing presence of the Lord Jesus so that he can work through us even in the most difficult of situations. Our prayers of intercession today. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Peter, our Archbishop, and all those who lead and guide our church during these challenging times, we pray to the Lord. 
We pray also today for peace in our world, especially in Ukraine and in Sudan and other areas of our world that are in strife. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of our visitors, all those traveling during the summer for safe travels. We pray to the Lord. We also pray for the healing power of the Holy Spirit upon all of our sick, those who have requested our prayers, that they may be healed in after illness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all our beloved dead, for Mary Stoyles, for Maureen Williams, for Cy Masony. For these and all those who have died in the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. And for your own intention in the quiet of your hearts today. We pray to the Lord. And God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts. We make them the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Through your word and your spirit, you called all things into being, that your love might, love might be reflected in the vastness of the universe, in the bounty of land and sea, and in the diversity of people who bear your image. Yet your gifts of nature did not exhaust your goodness, for the fullness of your love was only revealed when you sent your only begotten Son for our salvation and pour out your spirit to gather us into one as your own. And therefore, with the great company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints, especially St. John the Baptist, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. We pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share the peace of Christ now with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only but say only the, see word, the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that you please begin from the side sections to come to Communion first, that you please maintain a two meter distance in the Communion line, and that you sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. If you are unable to receive Holy Communion, you are welcome to come forward to receive a blessing. Communion hymn is found in Celebrate in Song. It's number 6.1, Celebrate in Songs.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Just a reminder that the afternoon teas for the summer begin tomorrow at two o'clock, and also on Friday at 12.45, there will be a, an organ recital here at the Basilica for lunchtime, so 12.45 after the funeral, and uh, by a, a, world, a world-renowned organist, Sean Jackman, and that will be at quarter to one, 12.45 on Friday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. Our missioning hymn is found on page 582 of the Catholic Book of Worship, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, number 582.